I got you. I got yeah. You. Right. All right, my friend. Where's that little kniffy I had? I put it in the sink. You want a different? Well, just to cut it. Yeah. We don't have to cut it, but no. I just thought it would be nice to. So, um, this is my first time eating witch's butter. Harvested from hardwoods. I didn't even previously know it was an edible, so this is my first time trying this. I guess this is going to be a catch and cook witch's butter video, but <laughs> there's so much more than that. So yeah, this is a long journey through some duck hunting, some mushroom foraging, mm -hmm. uh, other duck hunting, uh, grouse and, and shooting. grouse shooting, and so on. So I hope you enjoy the long format version. Um, here we go with the, uh, the witch's butter. Witch's butter. Cheers. On toast. I like this, uh, I like the first light. First light of the morning, eh? Oh, yeah. Is that east? No, uh, that's a little more south over there. It's weird though, that's where the light's coming and we're facing right into it. Maybe, maybe I'm misoriented, maybe that is the east. Shooting light. Yeah, they want to come back. Shots too, if we would have been paying attention. So, I love these mornings out here. And then you, you get that first flurry of activity, and then it's like, Okay, wait, now, what do we do? now when do we stop? Like, how long are we going to wait? Yeah. Got a couple of ducks to pick up. We heard some geese, but um, they stayed at the other end of the lake. We had a few a few flybys. There's a pileated woodpecker calling. And uh, it's super nice out. It was rainy when we started, but it's nice now. We're protected anyway, so we got the uh, Steve Scissor Blind. Right. This is pretty nice. Got burlap on the outside, so and there's something like extremely nice about sitting here when it's pissing rain. Oh yeah. And you're perfectly oh, yeah. dry, Colin Burns. Yeah. And yeah. the sun's coming up. Like, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly this, nice. This would have been miserable in a canoe. It would have been soaking wet. So we're gonna figure out our plan. Um I also before we get too deep in, there's there's more video after this, obviously. Um I should shout out that there's a, an Olight sale starting October 28th, so I, I have a coupon code you can use. I'm going to pop it down below, and they've got some some sales. I'm going to show you a couple lights as well. The um, Seeker and the Seeker Pro. There's a special edition. Cool stuff. Um, so you can check that out. Try it this morning. This thing works like a charm. Yep. <laughs> That's a good move. swim with you. All right, it's shallow, eh? It's pretty shallow, so. All right. You jump in, and then you decide yourself a gable time in there. You're right. We're at a new location, and oh, here we are. New location. We're getting launched here. Going in. We're gonna try a new spot. I got no tripod. I did. And uh, I put the plug in, I did all those things. I'm sideways. There we are. That's good there, I think. It's good. I'm launched. Yeah, 
right way. Now we're ready. <laughs> Let's. I mean, also, hold on. I didn't listen to my own advice here. Oh. Let me just throw in. I gotta try these. Are these number threes. See if they even fire these Challenger. Easy three easy. Well, you know what? I'll do that on a second volley. Hold on. Let me get this. Let me at least, even if I don't cock it, at least I have some shells in there to work with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. If there's ducks coming. Get that out of the way, bitch. Get out of the way. All right, you ready? Okay. Oh yeah, yours should probably come. Oh shit. Oh, I got a weird too at the middle of the glass one, that worked pretty good on this side. See? Well, at least put this guy down. Yeah. Oh, I'm fucking up. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and I left all the reeds at that other fucking line. Oh, no! I gotta go back there, man. You know how much work that was? <laughs> well, maybe we'll okay. there in the morning. Okay. This, even just this goes such a long way. Oh yeah. For concealment, you know? Well, I remember when we um, hunted that pond by my house and we just stuck like two sticks in the mud and a piece yeah. of burlap and it made yeah, all it the totally difference. Worked. Yeah, it totally worked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. All right, like we're mostly... I would, I would love to, you know what I might do is push this ass mostly end out and throw the anchor so we're just a little bit more... Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Do it. Okay. All right, what do we got in the box? Give me this. Let me Some uh, kit number threes. <laughs> Put those in. Cover that back up. Keep them, keep them close by. Get a little sponsor spot in here while we're waiting for the ducks to come by. Well, there is a big sale, so October the twenty eighth. Um, so one of the featured items are these seekers that I did charge this one up. These are a chunky grippy light. They got that what do they call that? An aggressive bezel bevel? No, an aggressive bezel. Zephod bezel box. Doesn't have a tail switch, but here it is. Hold it down, she gets brighter. Brighter! And dim again. Double click. Super bright. Triple click. Ooh, blink mode. You getting mad at me yet? Scaring all the ducks away. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah. Oh, light. <laughs> Ta -da, there's a I think it's on. great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's chunky, eh? Yeah, it is nice. Yeah. And it has like finger like grip uh, bezeling. Yeah. It like fits your fingers. Yeah, it does. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's uh. In the, in the box, there's the uh, charger, the lanyard, um, the one that you will be excited about, and that will be sold out before the sale even starts, based on your feedback, is the Seeker 3 Pro. This is the limited edition. 250 meters compared to 220 meters of throw, and 4,200 lumens That's crazy, compared dude. to 3,500. The, the headlights on my Jeep are like killer LEDs that I think there's 6,000. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something, or it might be 12, I don't know. Yeah. But they're super bright, like that, probably, that must be crazy. Probably cheaper just to buy two of these and wire them up to your Jeep. Yeah. Call it a light bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw some other good, uh, Olight makes a, um, a coin everyday carry knife. It's just a circle, but it opens up into like a nice little sharp blade. I've never like seen those before. Yeah, like oh. a coin knife. I never I heard know. of that. I hope they send me one to show, because that looked cool. And uh, if you buy a light, you get a free... Coin knife? No, uh, one of the free mini flashlights that I have on my keychain. Oh, those are Which crazy. is like yeah. super handy dandy. Yeah. There's our uh, eight geese. Eight mallards. Yeah, we didn't even throw any teals. You know, we're dummies because we saw we shot teals this morning and didn't put out any teal decoy. Yeah. 
but they'll come into bigger decoys, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, those smaller ducks, like that's kind of how it goes. Like each smaller species likes to land with the biggest one. Yeah, All the yeah. way up to like blacks and mallards will love to come in with ease. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're curious at all still still rocking the old wingmaster i haven't um i haven't shot the choke out of it yet with steel shot but i'm gonna have to uh i'm either gonna have to rebarrel this gun soon or i'm gonna um get into a new gun but this one's been good to me for a long time uh it's as old as i am that's awesome yeah oh, no, call. oh you don't don't shoot gulls. No. Uh, I don't think so. I think they're little seed eaters. Uh, where are they at now? Oh, they're coming out front again. So there's um, there they are, snowbirds, and it's hard to tell, but they're like, yeah, and they're drinking. I think they're stopping, like they're scooping up water or bugs right off the surface. Yeah, my camera doesn't want to focus on them, but they're for sure they're touching the water. Yeah, I can see them splashing out. Yeah, it's super neat. Yeah, that was interesting. I can't believe they're still doing it. There's a bunch of buzzing around, picking something off the water, and taking drinks. Yeah, they've been at it for a few minutes. When they were when they were way far out, so you thought they were a flock of teals coming in, yeah, which they, they would have been pretty them. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Right now, so far we haven't really seen too much, but it's almost the witching hour for ducks. Close, I'd say another half hour or so, they're gonna start to yeah. just pile in. <laughs> and then we're gonna meet up with Justin from, uh, he was in the last video, his little dog Millie. You might remember when we were uh, grouse hunting and mushrooming and stuff. So we're gonna go hang out with him. Oh, and you should let and, people uh, know if there, are, if there are, I know we have some, so, some shared followers. I have a, a recipe coming out in the next few days oh. probably tomorrow yeah with justin from four walls the same guys apple cider vinegar i made venice apple cider venison ribs oh that sounds they're good really good oh they nice so good dude yeah if you watched my last video you saw some of that vinegar there so you've actually had a chance to use it and, i just uh, tried it for the first time it's super sweet it's super it has like it's it is really like fermented you could tell what its original use was yeah and it has another i can't remember i say it in the videos i'm pretty sure it had another flavor that it reminded me of something else. A very, very interesting vinegar. Hmm. Very good. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it a try. The cognac of vinegars, if you will. Ooh. Nice. That might be a good sign too, though, eh? Like, there's yeah, a whole... Cool. Yeah. So all the snow buntings, they scoot by. And then out here, you might see against the sky, there's like a whole big string of crows. Yeah, yep. they're all flying over to a roost. It's a whole murder of crows. What they're doing. <laughs> Murdering. And we've got uh, 45 minutes, I think, of shooting late left. So now it's pretty much prime time coming. Yeah. Up. All right. <coughs> I'm prime. <coughs> See all those crows over that hill, eh? They're all doing a big circle and oh, yeah. roosting up there. Just a big woody swamp behind us, and then the lake out in front of us. No. Did you see a bird? No, I just was going to say we did get buzzed by those two at the side, but they might have made you on the side, eh? I think they made me on the side. Yeah. No, they weren't in range. Yeah. That's how she goes. How she goes. Yeah, you got to have eyes behind your head. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, you need a rear view mirror on here that... Yeah, it just goes... Let's see behind you. Back of the blind. <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> That'll be the duck machine 2.75. <laughs> Yeah, they say don't overcall, but there's that one hen out in front of us and she's been calling steady for 20 minutes. Oh, huh? easily. I've been having like a full-on quack-off with her. Yeah. And she will not shut up. 
She's still going. I don't know if you can hear all your kids. Yeah, I don't know. <coughs> then there was a nice big flock. I think there was 15, Steve says 30. <coughs> they just crossed the lake and they, I saw them land. I don't think they're going to want to put up and come over though. Yeah. We both had our heads down. I didn't even call to them. I didn't see them until they were already over there putting like on committing to go down. Yeah, and we just have a few minutes left, right? Yeah, Getting okay. right right to the end. Yeah, a lot of times you would hit this last light is the best shoot. So. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna put the camera down and get ready here. Yeah. And there's rain over there too. Yeah, it's getting a little get a little hard. A little to dark see. anyway, huh? Yeah. Well, oh. we'll try. Yeah, I can't say we didn't try. A little peek. Peek with this big light. You want to see what 4,500 lumens looks like? Yeah. It's like God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about these lights uh, a lot is that even though they go like super bright, they also have a pretty low light setting, which yeah. is handy. Always handy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look out here. Uh, that's the that's the low light setting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No wonder they have ooh, right 200 meters of throw on that. There's there's the low light setting. That's nice. That's easy on the eyes. All right, well, we'll uh, we're gonna pack it up, pack it in. Pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. Ah, dash cam. Dash cam. Dash what's, our, cam. what's our yesterday's summary? We we did a couple of duck hunts. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get a bird last night. Not very successful ones, but they were, it was nice to get out. And uh, now we're. And then we went for a great dinner at uh, our friend Justin's place. Yeah, an amazing dinner. Yeah, a nice smoked duck, uh, fresh homemade pasta. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah. And some homemade... Uh, oh, we should have took him up on the pie thing because now we're not going to see him. We don't get pie. He messaged me this morning. He said, uh, I'm a bit of a fair weather hunter. We invited him out. So he, he didn't necessarily want to make the long drive to hunt in the rain. He said he also didn't know how to explain showing up with three quarters of a pie. <laughs> and that it was a delicious breakfast. So. I bet it was. Yeah, he offered it. He made a beautiful peach pie like from scratch. He was going to yeah. give it to us. And then we were like, oh no, we were super polite yeah, and everything. Yeah. No, and then no, now well, we're being, yeah. now I'm just like, you were idiots. We thought we'd meet up this morning, right? We were gonna, yeah, we were gonna. <clears> and then morning. it just didn't work out like that. So the weather's not good. And so we got skunked for pie. We got skunked on pie, skunked on ducks last night. We shot two ducks all morning yesterday. It's not been a big, yeah. a big uh, haul this time out. But uh, now we're just headed out to a spot, Jer knows for uh, hopefully some Ganoderma suge, the Rishi mushroom, our local variant of the Rishi mushroom, the hemlock varnish shelf. Yeah. And maybe shoot a few grouse in the face. So. And there's a little duck pond or two there where we might get... Um, oh, might get some shots. Yeah. So, oh, I didn't know that part of it. That's exciting. Yeah, so the trick with those is you gotta... Duck boner! You got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your little cloaca's tingling. Uh, your duck cloaca. <laughs> The duck boner. Do you know how they have really weird, crazy, like corkscrew penises that are like two feet long? <clears throat> They're not like two feet long. Uh, some species have like crazy big long dicks. <clears throat> so you're saying some of them have super long vaginas? I don't, yeah. I and think somehow they have super long vaginas also. Because <laughs> they have a cloaca, so it's not even a penis. It's a, what is it then? It's a cloacal protuberance. I don't know if you've ever seen in like the Chinese restaurants where you can, or the Chinese grocery where you can get dried duck penises. I haven't. That's a thing. And I love the Louis C.K. bit on that. Like there's no better indication that you've completely fucking dominated a species than when you're selling its <laughs> dehydrated penises in a barrel. Uh -huh. And that is very true. But there's some freaking long ones, man. And they do corkscrew. So like basically when ducks do it, uh, the hen cannot get away. Yeah, yeah. Right? They have a literal corkscrew barbed dick. Like dogs. Like dogs. So that doesn't sound fun at all for the lady. Yeah, that's weird. For either of them, if you ask me. 
I bet but anyway, you ninety percent of people are googling right now. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, so I was just like <clears throat> duck boner, but actually a duck boner is like this. <laughs> duck boner. <laughs> uh, this video went sideways. Yeah, something went something went terribly wrong here. <laughs> I don't even know what we were talking about. We were talking about yeah, what, what, what I was talking about was when you shoot ducks over a little pond, you got to wait till they're like going to land on the dry land. The only way I've right. done it successfully is to figure out the wind and only shoot them in a spot where you know the wind is eventually going to bring them to that the, an edge that you can get to. Because a lot of times it's real swampy little alder bits. Yeah. And you can't even really get in yeah, there no. or that floaty stuff. Yeah. This nope. spot is all like dead sticks at all angles because the beaver is basically flooded flood out of. Right. Oh, oh so wherever forest. the wind is, it's going to be all right. To the pond is the big enough that you can get shots at them, mostly like right across the pond. So yeah. you can wait till they're over the, or the, really close the to the edge. And, yeah, yeah. The, and they're probably going to fall in the woods. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a lot of chatter. We may or may not even see a duck there, but we're hoping to see grouse, and we definitely want to pick Ganodermas. I'm pretty much 100% sure we're going to find fall oysters, so I feel like we're not going to get skunk. Yeah, we could grab a bunch of Pinellas, and for those of you that don't know, Oh, this thing moved. Oh. For those of you that don't know, the Ganoderma suge, the hemlock varnish shelf, um, I've had a lot, I get a lot of questions in my mushroom course about medicinal mushrooms, etc. Actually, we just did a huge uh, workshop uh, two days ago here yeah. with 30 people. It was yeah. great uh, about medicinal mushrooms, and we went out and ID'd a bunch, etc. But people want to know where to find that, Rishi, and I'll give you the best tip you ever heard. On this particular one, there is a clue right in its proper true Latin name, Ganoderma suge. And why suge, Jer? What yes. genus is that? Eastern hemlock. That is the eastern hemlock. You're only going to find uh, the the hemlock varnish shelf, Organoderma suge, on dead or dying eastern hemlock trees. So if you're into the reishi mushroom, go Google that. Check out its health benefits. There are many of them. In Chinese medicine, this mushroom, the, their cousin that they have over there, has been referred to for eons as the immortality mushroom for good reason. It was literally illegal for mere peasants to harvest them they were for kings only and there's very good reason for that it's a valuable health resource and uh, you can go out for yourself and harvest some for free off of dead and dying hemlocks if you know what to look for so google that bad boy ganoderma suge t-s-u-g-a-e and uh get yourself well all right yeah you, you, you crazy kids all right so this is the gross ganoderma stuff so we got the hemlocks here on the left the, or on the right. There's one there anyway. Those are there. There you go. Yeah. And then that little pond is just over there on the left. What we're going to do is we're going to work the right hand side. We're going to look for grouse and ganodermas and then get in, poke around that pond. We're going to come up the other side and that whole hill, that whole slope behind the pond is hemlocks. all hemlocks. Yeah, I can see it from here. Yeah. Hey, and you know what? This is a useful tip for people. You know how you can tell a hemlock from far away if you're not good at identifying by leaves? The, the tip, the very tip of the tree always does this. You, if yeah, you yeah. Notice. Yeah, they're not usually, um, like when you look at a, a little balsam tree, they got like triangle tops usually. Yeah. And then when you look at a hemlock tree, like the one that's in the middle of the frame there, you can see it's got a little bend to it. It always has that little bend on top. I don't know yeah. why that is, but they all do it. So, tip that from... be a lesson to you. <laughs> oh, here's a little score. Lion's mane. Just about too far gone to pick, but these are going to be good. I have to meet up with Steve and then I'm going to show him these. So we, we made a little plan about getting around on opposite sides of that duck pond so that we can flush. If there are birds in there, we'll flush them to each other. So Steve was just saying, uh, a lot of moose sign in here. We met up at this pond. I said, yep, it's always really moosey in here. And then I literally turned around and there's a beautiful antler shed right there. That's a pretty lucky find. It's going to be heavy to pull it out of here. I might... Maybe I will not disturb it and let Steve get a picture of that. It's in really nice shape. It hasn't been chewed up by rodents yet. Beauty. As we spotted all these nice oysters over here. And then 
I don't think you'll see it, but through here there's a dead tree. Uh, it's got a pile of something on it, so we're going to go have a peek at that too. So that's exactly what they are, Pinellus serotinus, the fall oyster. These guys are not in great shape. So we'll go back and pick those other oysters. And then we still have to look for some Ganodermas up in Hemlock Land. There, this is where I normally find those Pinellus oysters on horizontal yellow birch logs. So, there they are. It's hard to maneuver when you got a moose antler on your back. Um, that's a dead mushroom of another variety, but there's, there's our little Pinellus serotinus. Getting a good mixed bag today. Uh, right spot, right spot, wrong time. Here's a bunch of varnish shelf, but they are old. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or more. Maybe, maybe a little baby one growing down there with that white top edge. And looks pretty white underneath as well. I don't know how badly Steve wants one, if that's going to meet his criteria or not. That little beaver pond is real pretty from this side of the hill. And uh, might not be super obvious, but these are all big hemlocks. There's a bunch of them lying down, old, old fallen ones. There are a few hemlock stumps. It's the perfect, the perfect spot to find Ganoderma. So here's another hemlock stump. Um, these are not the varnish shelf mushrooms. See, they've got a wide bracket attachment and they got a bumpy top without that waxy appearance. Those are a different kind of a Ganoderma, not the varnish shelf, but um, something that these old hemlocks are great for if you have a campfire is um, burning oops, this bark. This bark makes an amazing hot bed of cooking coals. And um, if you find it on these dead standing trees, then it's um, nice and dry. Works great. And then on this stump adjacent, here is a nice, enormous, fresh Ganoderma. It, again, it's not the varnish shelf. Uh, the varnish shelf is red. Um, but I, again, I don't know if that's one that Steve is looking for. I think he specifically wants the varnish shelf. But also noticed, so while I was looking at that, these little um, jelly hedgehogs caught my eye. There's some cute little guys there, which are um, harvestable. There's not much to them, but uh, we can add them to our diversity. They were supposed to like sleeping. Like yeah. We had a we had a short but sweet uh, hunt and forage, so um, kind of started slow. But we we Stevie Funkberger got a couple of birds yeah. right in the last few minutes, that and out uh, good. we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have another one in my pot. Uh, that means seven species of those red belted polypores. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are those in your bag? So yeah, there's some in my bag. So check this out. Here's our two rough grouse some Harissia mushrooms. We got a whole bunch of the witch's butter growing on hardwoods. So we know yeah. it's not, you said the yellow the, Yeah, the spot. orange jelly spot is orange uh, jelly spot. mildly toxic. I don't even know how toxic it really is. I've obviously never tried it because it was taught to me that way or like I learned it that way. But uh, yeah, it's basically best practice. The savvy forger is only gonna ever take this stuff off hardwoods off and hardwoods. you know it's witch's butter. Yeah, yeah. And then nice oysters. Yeah, oyster mushrooms. So this one is the Fomatopsis that you got, the red belted. I can't remember the species. It's definitely Fomatopsis okay. genus. This is the red belted polypore. Yeah, yeah. Called the red banded polypore. Okay. I don't know a lot about it, so I just took a couple of smallish ones like this because I want to study them. Yeah. But it's a really good medicinal mushroom. I know my buddy who's a herbalist that prescribes it for some stuff, etc. So that's pretty badass, man. It's something I want to get more into. There's so. the little jelly hedgehogs. I love those Pseudo icicle hidden jellies. Pseudo hidden um, something. something. And then of course the moose antler. So uh, that's awesome. Now we get to the cook portion of the video. 
Okay, so we just laid out our mushrooms, and um, these ones here, Steve grabbed right at the end. He thought they were elm oysters, but now going over some ID, he's not sure. So even when you're as smart and knowledgeable as Stevie Funfur, you still double check when you get back before you, you get You gotta anything. double check, man. So yeah. I'll tell you what's, if you were interested at all, the elm oyster Hypsisigus ulmarius, which is what I believed this guy to be, it was on the right kind of substrate, etc. is supposed to have, like, I believe it's subdecurrent. I should look it up again, but uh, just the way the gills interact with the stipe, and they do touch, okay, so they're attached. They're in that family, and a lot of times you get weird morphs that don't always line up with what you've learned or what, you know, the picture looks like in your guidebook, okay? Yeah. Your field guide, so, like, I'm, Confident these are either Hypsisigus or, or Pleurotus. They're in one of those two genus, but let's just be 100% clear about this. Yeah. We never eat any wild mushrooms out of the bush until we are 100% sure all the way down to species. So this particular guy, I'm about like 98% sure, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not gonna freaking eat it, you dumb dubs. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna feed them to me. I gotta give him to Jer. Jer yeah. can have. I forgot to talk about these. I um I found these on a maple, which is not where I expected to find them. I expected to find them on an uh, alder. These are the King Alfred's cakes. So these are like a, a using mushroom. You can dry them out, and uh, if you like bushcrafty stuff, they are excellent for catching. Uh, flint and steel sparks. Looks good. So yeah, part, we'll do some judicious trimming. Eh? Yeah, this guy, this part here looks pretty good. There's one little corner that's a little rotty, right? And all this stuff, you can actually just tell, like, if you have a question about whether to eat a mushroom or not, that usually means just cut that part off. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah. Like, and there's some edges here that are probably going to get trimmed. Yeah, that big boy, like, yes, yeah, so a lot of that's good, though, right? A lot of that's yeah. good, but there's some janky-looking shit on there. Like, like, don't eat that, man. You know, don't make yourself sick. And you won't necessarily get sick. Like we're cut, we're cooking this stuff, right? So that you know, you're probably gonna cook out any of the baddies. But anything that looks janky, just get rid of it, and then don't be don't be a dummy. Yes. There's the uh, yeah. Your viewers gonna love that. They're gonna love that. that penis you will have already seen that segment, so you can comment below on if you love that segment or not. <laughs> um, these. I just want to talk about witch's butter. So these are the witch's butter, which we got off of hardwoods. We found a lot of it today. And Steve tells me that you can saute it and spread it on toast. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're going to do. I think one of them, I rinsed them off, but one of them might be a little bit gritty. I just tried to, to work get any sand off of it. Maybe a re-rinse or something? Yeah, I did a couple rinses. I think, oh. I think we're going to be pretty good. All right knife for this but oh, whatever and then so these are your what's that variety called your little tomatoes? this is a really nice little tomato i've been growing for the first time this year called blush yeah, yeah you can see why it's got this little blush around it it's a little it's not really a pear tomato it's not really i don't know i'd like this oblong shape but they're really nice it's a really nice i'm gonna grow this every year i think i really like them yeah yeah they're really prolific too you get tons of them and then we got some uh, oysters and some... Oysters and heresiums. Um, two different kinds. Yeah. There's Coralloides and Americanum in there. Mm. So that's pretty cool. Now, I don't have a good knife here, so just don't pay any attention to my Sorry. terrible chef technique. Cleaver that onion. I know. This is... So, you know, a smart guy would just do this, you know, like a smart guy. Right? Yeah. But I like doing it like this. <laughs> you on the cutting board. Oh, it's too fun. I can't stop. Try and stop me. Yeah, then then you lose some fingertips. <laughs> All right, let's let's get back to some reasonable modicum of safety. Okay, there you go. Now we got some money. Got the breads. Come on, toast duty. I'll get her started. Here is breads. This which is butter toast, and this is one of my favorite ways to eat this. Bear with me. Hold on, I'm just getting some butter into this already nice warm pan. I'd say that's medium high. Maybe a little higher. That thing's really holding heat here. I'm going to turn that down. And now all you got to do, my friend, is take this... Well, let's get that butter melted down. Okay. Okay. Because despite the name, it's really just the color that uh, makes that into, you know, why it gets its common name of witch's butter. It doesn't really taste like butter. So put some in it. Dump that stuff in. All right. And this is a really, really quick saute. This is like... What, among the quickest of the wild mushrooms, I would say just a minute or two, really. It cooks very quickly, and then we're going to spread that on toast like savages. It's going to be amazing. Smells really good. 
I'm gonna pop it, and this stuff does tend to jump. Oh, okay. So you're breaking it up. You got it pop a bit. Yep. I'm cutting it down, but you don't okay. really need to do it this much. I, I, I like it like that. Nice. Okay, we got butter on that toast. Oh, yeah. Okay, give her. Melt it down while she's hot. Okay, that's pretty hot, actually, for now. Although there's other mushrooms going right in here in a second. Go ahead. So she's done. That's a real. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep it down. I just want to make sure it's nice and thoroughly cooked all the way through for you. I've eaten this a bunch of times. I never had any reaction to it, so. But we don't know that yet with you, right? We should make sure. No, and like I haven't really had. Uh, I wonder if it's like people who are prone to reacting to mushrooms are prone to kind of reacting to all of them. Maybe, yeah. I don't know because I rarely. I don't. I can't remember one time other than having eaten that baby amanita that one time. Yeah. Having any reaction to any mushroom I've ever eaten. Yeah, and I I might have gotten poisoned off of a lobster mushroom that maybe was too rotten to eat, but it also, I yeah. ate a whole bunch of other, like I ate minnow soup that day and like other little things, right? Yeah. So something. Good, good chance it wasn't the mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I've never had any reaction to any mushroom, but it is just a good habit. Cook yeah, everything yeah. thoroughly. It's your first time eating it. Yeah. I think we should just do our due diligence Play here. Play it safe. Play it safe, right? Always. Right? There's no, there's so many good mushrooms. There's no reason to take risks, right? So, okay, that's an extra, that's got to be at least four or five minutes. Hold on, let me get my little guys all sorted. All right, we've got now an extra minute or two, and it's time to start doling out that witch's butter right all up in the business, all right? So just to be thoroughly um, sure about what I'm telling you here, I sometimes myself, having eaten this a bunch of times, only really cook this for a couple of minutes. I've done a full five or six minutes really on this because it is Jared's first time eating it and we don't want to upset his little tummy. You can have a, and I, of course I'm just joking, right? Like you can have a, on a serious note, you can have a food allergy to anything you eat, whether it's from the wild or from the grocery store, etc. It's always best to try a little bit and a well-cooked um, version of it the first time you eat it. So that's what we're doing here. Hold on, where's my kniffy? Now I'm just going to, oh, it's got butter on it. We don't need that butter because there's lots in there. Oh, sorry, I'm in your shop. That's sorry, okay, dude. I got you. I'm just trying to get out of the way of Jared's shot here. And now all I'm doing is spreading that stuff right out all nice and sweet. I see if I had another hand, you would see. Look at that. That's nice, man. Am I right? All right. So uh, I'm going to spread that a little better, actually holding the toast like a normal person. Yeah. Here. All right. I just was holding my stupid phone. Okay. Let's just get that all over. Nice crispy toast on there. Nice buttery witch's butter from the witch's teat. Am I right? I don't know where else it would come from. Straight from the witch's teat. That's you know, if it, a good witch trick would be if it came, if it was just directly. Just <laughs> yeah. but, but she calls it witch's butter. Ew. Trick perverts like you. <laughs> all right, it's all cooked up. Here we go. Mm, it's good. There's some texture. That's good. Yeah, it's got a jelly. It's jelly. It's a jelly texture. It's a jelly fungus. Mmm. Not. It's not a strong mushroom. No, not at all. But it's there. You can tell it's fungus, but mm. it's not like a strong taste. It's a good beginner mushroom in that regard. Like people who are like mushrooms but don't love mushrooms. Like I like really strong flavored mushrooms mm -hmm. generally. So that's a, maybe a good use for it. It's like, you know, try this on someone who likes this kind of thing spread on toast. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want to get overwhelmed by earthy mushroom flavor? Yeah. For me, it lacks a little umami, you know, like, like I like that mushroomy kick, but. I wonder if that would be good on uh, like a piece of meat or on. Uh, sure. Yeah. It's, I'm not, it's not really giving me like any rice or pasta no, inspirations, but. No, I, you know what would. Be, this also, too, these jellies take flavor really well, so you could. Mm. Potentially, you know, mm -hmm. flavor it with some other things if you wanted a little bit more flavor on it. No, that's good. But I like it just as is with some butter. Because then it's like just, it really just like a thick, gooey butter on your toast. Yeah. But you can see how this would be good, how I was originally saying. Toast, which is butter. Slap a couple eggs on there. Mm -hmm. Throw some other mushrooms on mm -hmm. top. Mm -hmm. some, that's what we're doing on the next yeah. round. <laughs> so this is the witch's butter version, just so I can try it on its own. But we're doing a mixed mushroom egg sandwich. Yeah, maybe even open face. It might be deadly. Mm-hmm.
All right. It might oh. just be freaking deadly, so watch out. Might. Guaranteed. Mm. So hang in there. Camera's on, so this is round two. This is the full mixed mushroom and egger sandwich. Yeah, um, this is gonna be good. Open these, face. These are some nice eggs from uh, Nick's Farm and Vineyard. Cause that's his buddy over on the island there. I think he has egg. These are from the Azure Blues. Uh, they're a chicken that lays this bluish egg. And then these are from his other chickens. Nice thick shells and uh, perky yolks on those guys. So Steve's gonna do... Starting with the mushrooms, the oysters done. are, these are really mature specimens. Usually they would cook in about the same time as these heresiums, but I'm putting them on in advance just to get a get them going. And then I'll throw the heresiums in, finish the mushrooms. Then I'm gonna saute these tomatoes a little bit and just chuck those eggs on whole like a frittata. Mm. I'm not even gonna like, I'm just gonna do yolks open and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just gonna be a big mass of like mushrooms, tomatoes and eggs and deliciousness. So that, I think we've used this before. This bacon salt was a gift from my son. Yeah, it's super good. So like, oh, well that my dad likes salt and he likes bacon. So how could you go wrong? You like salt? You like bacon? Yeah. Uh, we got a product for you. Bacon salt. So these tomatoes are just uh, getting a little bit uh, pre-sauteed. We'll get them sauteing and jumping. That's what that word means, by the way, guys, if you don't speak French. Sauté means to jump. And that's where the whole English term comes from because we make them jump in the pan, mama. All right, so that right there is pretty close to where I want it to be. Now, here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna crack a bunch of eggs right up onto that nice fresh garden business. All right, I'll do it right before your very eyes. I dare me? You freaking dare me? Because that's what's about to happen here. I dare you. All right. So some fresh eggs right off of Nick's farm, I believe these you said, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's try to be mindful of not getting shells in there. I'm not scrambling them. I'm not flipping them. We're putting a bunch of freaking eggs in with some tomatoes and some freaking mushrooms. And then we're going to eat it like savages. So uh, we're basically, what do you think? Two each or three each? How, how many how many eggs can you eat, dude? Two each is probably good Two's for lots. me, yeah. Let's do one extra blue one. All right. Just to be cool. All right, just to make sure. What? It's not blue inside? Oh, <laughs> boo. So anyway, I'm gonna, I've turned the heat down a little. Now, check it out. We're just going to distribute all the ingredients evenly so we get a nice bite. Now, let's not forget. You don't know, if you're not following my... Instagram, you don't know this particular very, very important little, I guess it's a catchphrase. I don't know if I do catchphrases, but salt and pep at every step. It's a thing I, oh, that's a lot of salt <laughs> and that one <laughs> egg. So that's it's yours, Jerry. Chunky, yeah. It's just my hands are a little wet. Wow. So salt and pep at every step. Every time you add something to a, a, a recipe, you ought to be sort of, you know, mindfully salting and pepping every single step. And I'm putting a little more pep on this just because it's an omelet. And then when you do that, you have the exact right amount always on everything you cook because you're always adding just a little bit at every step. So I hope that's helpful to you. Now we're taking these delicious heresiums and oyster mushrooms. I'm gonna jam them right on top so they cook into this business. Like right up in it to win it, my little friend. So and now I'm gonna smash these yolks, okay? Smash the yolks. Okay, these have already been salted it and pepped it, 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 it. All right, now we're just gonna let that cook. Chuck it on toast. Beautiful. Five minutes, delicious. Wow, mama. That's looking good. Yeah, man, smelling really good. Holy. Oh, it must be another step because you're salt and pepper again. Yep. Flipped it. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure I have enough of this bacon salt that we had. Oh. Taste that little bacony goodness. All right. But I did. I want to show you a little trick here. You got to do this fast in the casty. Remember those? Uh, were you filming when I put the cheese on? No. I don't know if you were. Anyway, I had some cheese. It wasn't melting fast enough. So I'm flipping that over and look, it's done and a little oh. crispy. Yeah, yeah. But you got to do it quick or else on a casty it will stick to the yeah, bottom of the pan. Like, make mass. Okay. Look at that. I guess these are moving over to our toast. Look at this freaking business, bro. Come on. Tell me you don't want to eat that. Yeah, let's get that. Uh, I need a this, maybe. All right, we're talking about this business with all this freaking foraged homegrown goodness, including the eggs. Am I right? Oh, damn, son. Yeah. It smells amazing. Okay, I'm putting it everywhere. But then I can just smell the mushrooms and I can actually smell that bacon -y salt, dude. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Jeez. So make sure to get all that little cheese out of there. Okay, I'll pass some of that on there. Now we're eating some big gooey business right there. Look at that. That looks good. Woo! It's hot. Mm. 
That looks good. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's uh, oh, did you get some lunch on my chair. Bonus egg? Yeah. Nice. Chair lunch? Yeah, this smells really good, man. Mm-hmm. Hope I didn't put too much of that bacon salt. I got a little carried away with it because I just want to taste the bacon this. Because it's like a bacon and agar without the bacon. Oh, I know, I taste the bacon. That's yummy. Oh, I don't know if there's a better combo than like oh, bacon and mushroom. And cheese. And cheese. Real Fussy. cheese. Fussy cheese. That's hot. Nice. Okay, this one. Okay, there we and go. not a complicated recipe. Nothing to no it. No critical ratios to follow. I don't really do it that way. I just go to taste. I just taste it as I go along. Mm -hmm. And just jam shit in there in the right amounts, like to my eye and, and my tongue. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see how Steve does it, just head over to his Instagram account. Here. Yeah, yeah, we're rolling. Woo! Uh, link him below. Stevie underscore fun fur. Mm -hmm. Lots Ooh. of cooking, lots of hunting, lots of gardening. Look at that. Just dripping off the Yeah, that's, that's nice. nice. <laughs> And uh, way more live updates than I do, which is kind of nice because uh, I basically pace all my gardening activity off of what I see on your Instagram <laughs> account. Oh, good, yeah, good. He's trimming his tomatoes and I get go. there and I start trimming my tomatoes. And a lot of people do. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Or not. I have a ton of gardening like type people who mm -hmm. are, I don't do the hunting and fishing and foraging yeah, yeah. and stuff, but they do gardening. And we're always talking back and forth about like, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? Yeah. So it's kind of cool because it's like a little community on there. Yeah. Not just gardeners, like even just the hunting. I got hunting buddies on there that I yep. literally only know from there. And yep. we talk about what's flying where and are oh, you seeing birds oh, and that kind of good thing. Good intel. Yeah. 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 Nice. Right, there's a little community. Come over. Yeah, come over. Yeah. Let me try. Do right. it. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything. That was a good adventure. Oh, great. Adventure. I alerted everybody to the next Olight flashlight sale. Mm. Everybody should have a uh, a flashlight. A couple of them. Yeah. I have one in my car, one yeah. in my garage, one in my shed, two yeah. in my house, one yeah. in my bedroom. Like, it's just good to have them around. I'm always surprised at how many people will spend money on a good knife or something, but not pick up a reliable flashlight. Good flashlight, yeah. You know? I keep one in my um, basement. I literally probably, I'm just in the property, in a radius of my house, I probably have seven of them. Oh, Six yeah. Six or seven. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. I keep one in my hunting bag. I one have in my one car. on my bed stand. I got one on my keychain. Like, yeah. I use them all the time. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, especially if you're like an outdoorsy type, you know. Yeah. There's so many situations where it's like you just can't even get by without a yeah, little yeah. flashlight. Yeah, you don't need to buy one of those giant cheap ones that have no light in them or anything. No, I yeah. Know. I actually have a bunch of those all over my place. Like some of my shed ones and stuff are just like shitty. You know, they're yeah. LED now at least, you know, because like you can buy them for two for 15 bucks sometimes. Yeah. But they you get a year out of them. There's, and you, you know, just don't get a lot of light out of them. And, and they you suck. Get no, you get click on, click off. Yeah, you get click on and off, and you can't unless you're like the one. The reason they're in the shed is because it's like a you know a ten foot radius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That where you know you can do something with it, but forget about outside. It's yeah. like try and use one of those old school ones. Yeah. Like even with the LEDs, they totally yeah. suck. They do. No, yeah. big six volt battery in there, and they're super heavy and everything too. Yeah. So get out there, hunt, fish, forage, and cook good food. Mm -hmm. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>